digital television is the transmission of audio and video by digitally processed and multiplexed signal, in contrast to the totally analog and channel-separated signals used by analog television. Digital TV can support more than one program in the same channel bandwidth. It is an innovative service that represents the first significant evolution in television technology since color television in the 1950s. Several regions of the world are in different stages of adaptation and are implementing different broadcasting standards. Below are the different widely used digital television broadcasting standards. Digital video broadcasting uses coded orthogonal frequency division multiplexing modulation and supports hierarchical transmission. This standard has been adopted in Europe, Australia and New Zealand. Advanced Television System Committee uses eight-level vestigial sideband for terrestrial broadcasting. This standard has been adopted by six countries, United States, Canada, Mexico, South Korea, Dominican Republic and Honduras. Integrated Services Digital Broadcasting is a system designed to provide good reception to fixed receivers and also portable or mobile receivers. It utilizes OFDM and two-dimensional interleaving. It supports hierarchical transmission of up to three layers and uses MPEG-2 video and advanced audio coding. This standard has been adopted in Japan and the Philippines. ISDBT International is an adaptation of this standard using H264 MPEG-4 AVC that been adopted in most of South America and is also being embraced by Portuguese-speaking African countries. Digital Terrestrial Multimedia Broadcasting adopts time-domain synchronous OFDM technology with a pseudo-random signal frame to serve as the guard, interval of the OFDM block and the train training symbol. The DTMB standard has been adopted in the People's Republic of China, including Hong Kong and Macau. Digital multimedia broadcasting is a digital radio transmission technology developed in South Korea as part of the national IT project for sending multimedia such as TV, radio and data casting to mobile devices such as mobile phones, laptops and GPS navigation systems. History. Digital TV's roots have been tied very closely to the availability of inexpensive, high-performance computers. It wasn't until the 1990s that digital TV became a real possibility. In the mid-1980s as Japanese consumer electronics firms forged ahead with the development of HDTV technology, and as the Muse analog format proposed by NHK, a Japanese company, was seen as a pace setter that threatened to eclipse you. S. Electronics Companies. Until June 1990, the Japanese Muse standard, based on an analog system, was the front-runner among the more than 23 different technical concepts under consideration. Then, an American company, General Instrument, demonstrated the feasibility of a digital television signal. This breakthrough was of such significance that the FCC was persuaded to delay its decision on an ATV standard and until her digitally-based standard could be developed. In March 1990, when it became clear that a digital standard was feasible, the FCC made a number of critical decisions. First, the Commission declared that the new ATV standard must be more than an enhanced analog signal, but be able to provide a genuine HDTV signal with at least twice the resolution of existing television images. Then, to ensure that viewers who did not wish to buy a new digital television set could continue continue to receive conventional television broadcasts. It dictated that the new ATV standard must be capable of being simulcast on different channels. The new ATV standard also allowed the new DTV signal to be based on entirely new design principles. Although incompatible with the existing NTSC standard, the new DTV standard would be able to incorporate many improvements. The final standard adopted by the FCC did not require a single standard for scanning formats, aspect ratios, or lines of resolution. 
This outcome resulted from a dispute between the consumer electronics industry and the computer industry over which of the two scanning processes, interlaced or progressive, is superior. Interlaced scanning, which is used in televisions worldwide, scans even numbered lines first, then odd numbered ones. Progressive scanning, which is the format used in computers, scans lines in sequences, from top to bottom. The computer industry argued that progressive scanning is superior because it does not flicker in the manner of interlaced scanning. It also argued that progressive scanning enables easier connections with the Internet and is more cheaply converted to interlaced formats than vice versa. The film industry also supported progressive scanning because it offers a more efficient means of converting film programming into digital formats. For their part, the consumer the electronics industry and broadcasters argued that interlaced scanning was the only technology that could transmit the highest quality pictures then feasible, i.e., 1080 lines per picture and 1920 pixels per line. Broadcasters also favored interlaced scanning because their vast archive of interlaced programming is not readily compatible with a progressive format technical information. Formats and bandwidth digital television supports many different picture formats defined by the broadcast television systems which are a combination of size, aspect ratio, with digital terrestrial television broadcasting, the range of formats can be broadly divided into two categories, high-definition television for the transmission of high-definition video and standard-definition television. These terms by themselves are not very precise, and many subtle intermediate cases exist. One of several different HDTV formats that can be transmitted over DTV is 1280 x 720 pixels in progressive scan mode 1920 x 1080 pixels in interlaced video mode. Each of these uses a 16 to 9 aspect ratio. HDTV cannot be transmitted over analog television channels because of channel capacity issues. Standard definition TV, by comparison, may use one of several different formats taking the form of various aspect ratios depending on the technology used in the country of broadcast. For 4 to 3 aspect ratio broadcasts, the 640 times 480 format is used in NTSC countries, while 720 times 576 is used in PAL countries. For 16 to 9 broadcasts, the 720 times 480 format is used in NTSC countries, while 720 times 576 is used in PAL countries. However, broadcasters may choose to reduce these resolutions to reduce bitrate. Each commercial broadcasting terrestrial television DTV channel in North America is permitted to be broadcast at a bitrate up to 19 megabits per second. However, the broadcaster does not need to use this entire bandwidth for just one broadcast channel. Instead, the broadcast can use the channel to include PSIP and can also subdivide across several video subchannels of varying quality and compression rates, including non video data casting services that allow one way high bit rate streaming of data to computers like National Data Cast. A broadcaster may opt to use a standard definition digital signal instead of an HDTV signal, because current convention allows the bandwidth of a DTV channel to be subdivided into multiple digital subchannels, providing multiple feeds of entirely different television programming on the same channel. This ability to provide either a single HDTV feed or multiple lower resolution feeds is often referred to as distributing one's bit budget, or multicasting. 
This can sometimes be arranged automatically, using a statistical multiplexer. With some implementations, image resolution may be less directly limited by bandwidth. For example in DVB-T, broadcasters can choose from several different modulation schemes, giving them the option to reduce the transmission bit rate and make reception easier for more distant and mobile viewers. Receiving digital signal. There are several different ways to receive digital television. One of the oldest means of receiving DTV is from terrestrial transmitters using an antenna. This way is known as digital terrestrial television. With DTT, viewers are limited to channels that have a terrestrial transmitter in range of their antenna. Other ways have been devised to receive digital television. Among the most familiar to people are digital cable and digital satellite. In some countries where transmissions of TV signals are normally achieved by microwaves, digital MMDS is used. Other standards, such as digital multimedia broadcasting and DVB-H, have been devised to allow handheld devices such as mobile phones to receive TV signals. Another way is IPTV, that is receiving TV via internet protocol, relying on digital subscriber line or optical cable line. Finally, an alternative way is to receive digital TV signals via the open internet, whether from a central streaming service or a P2P system. Some signals carry encryption and specify use conditions backed up with the force of law under the World Intellectual Property Organization, Copyright Treaty and national legislation implementing it, such as the U.S. Digital Millennium Copyright Act. Access to encrypted channels can be controlled by a removable smart card, for example via the Common Interface Standard for Europe and via Point of Deployment 4 is a named differently K Cable card. Disadvantages. While poor signal analog TV quality could be evaluated by the user by the amount of noise on the screen, digital TV has no gray areas. It either works or does not when the signal is not strong enough. Protection parameters for terrestrial DTV broadcasting digital television signals must not interfere with each other, and they must also coexist with analog television until it is phased out. The following table gives allowable signal-to-noise and signal-to-interference ratios for various interference scenarios. This table is a crucial regulatory tool for controlling the placement and power levels of stations. Digital TV is more tolerant of interference than analog TV, and this is the reason a smaller range of channels can carry an all-digital set of television stations. Interaction People can interact with a DTV system in various ways. One can, for example, browse the electronic program guide. Modern DTV systems sometimes use a return path providing feedback from the end user to the broadcastee. This is possible with a coaxial or fiber optic cable, a dial-up modem, or internet connection but is not possible with a standard antenna. Some of these systems support video on demand using a communication channel localized to a neighborhood rather than a city or an even larger area. One segment broadcasting one seg is a special form of ISDB. Each channel is further divided into 13 segments. The 12 segments of them are allocated for HDTV and remaining segment, the 13th, is used for narrowband receivers such as mobile television or cell phone. Timeline of Transition Comparison of analog versus digital. DTV has several advantages over analog TV, the most significant being that digital channels take up less bandwidth, and the bandwidth needs are continuously variable, at a corresponding reduction in image quality depending on the level of compression as well as the resolution of the transmitted image. This means that digital broadcasters can provide more digital channels in the same space, 
provide high-definition television service, or provide other non-television services such as multimedia or interactivity. DTV also permits special services such as multiplexing, electronic program guides and additional languages. The sale of non-television services may provide an additional revenue source. Digital and analog signals react to interference differently. For example, common problems with analog television include ghosting of images, noise from weak signals, and many other potential problems which degrade the quality of the image and sound, although the program material may still be watchable. With digital television, the audio and video must be synchronized digitally, so reception of the digital signal must be very nearly complete. Complete. Otherwise, neither audio nor video will be usable. Short of this complete failure, blocky video is seen when the digital signal experiences interference. Analog TV started off with monophonic sound, and later evolved to stereophonic sound with two independent audio signal channels. DTV will allow up to five audio signal channels plus a subwoofer base channel, with broadcasts similar in quality to movie theaters and DVDs, compression artifacts and allocated bandwidth. DTV images have some picture defects that are not present on analog television or motion picture cinema. Because of present-day limitations of bit rate and compression algorithms such as MPEG-2, this defect is sometimes referred to as mosquito noise. Because of the way the human visual system works, defects in an image that are localized to particular features of the image that come and go are more perceptible than defects that are uniform, inconstant. However, the DTV system is designed to take advantage of other limitations of the human visual system to help mask these flaws, e.g., by allowing more compression artifacts during fast motion where the eye cannot track and resolve them as easily and, conversely, minimizing artifacts in still backgrounds that may be closely examined in a scene. Effects of poor reception Changes in signal reception from factors such as degrading antenna connections or changing weather conditions may gradually reduce the quality of analog TV. The nature of digital TV results in a perfectly decodable video initially, until the receiving equipment starts picking up interference that overpowers the desired signal or if the signal is too weak to decode. Some equipment will show a garbled picture with significant damage, while other devices may go directly from perfectly decodable video to no video at all or lock up. This phenomenon is known as the digital cliff effect. For remote locations, distant channels that, as analog signals, were previously usable in a snowy and degraded state may, as digital signals, be perfectly decodable and may become completely unavailable. The use of higher frequencies will add to these problems, especially in cases where a clear line of sight from the receiving antenna to the transmitter is not available. Effect on old analog technology television sets with only analog tuners cannot decode digital transmissions. When analog broadcasting over the air ceases, users of sets with analog-only tuners may use other sources of programming and may purchase set-top converter boxes to tune in the digital signals. In the United States, a government-sponsored coupon was available to offset the cost of an external converter box. Analog switch-off took place on December 11, 2006 in the Netherlands, June 12, 2009 in the United States for full power stations, July 24, 2011 in Japan, August 31, 2011 in Canada, February 13, 2012 in Arab States, May 1, 2012 in Germany, October 24, 2012 in the United Kingdom and Ireland, October 31, 2012 in selected Indian cities, and December 10, 2013 in Australia. Completion of analog switch-off is scheduled for December 31, 2014 in the whole of India, by 2015 in the Philippines and Uruguay, by September 1. 
2015 for low power stations in the United States, and by 2017 in Costa Rica. Disappearance of TV audio receivers. Prior to the conversion to digital TV, analog television broadcast audio for TV channels on a separate FM carrier signal from the video signal. This FM audio signal could be heard using standard radios equipped with the appropriate tuning circuits. However, after the transition of many countries to digital TV, no portable radio manufacturer has yet developed an alternative alternative method for portable radios to play just the audio signal of digital TV channels. Environmental issues. The adoption of a broadcast standard incompatible with existing analog receivers has created the problem of large numbers of analog receivers being discarded during digital television transition. One superintendent of public works was quoted in 2009 as saying, some of the studies I've read in the trade magazines say up to a quarter of American households could be throwing a TV out in the next two years. Following the regulation change, in 2009, an estimated 99 million analog TV receivers were sitting unused in homes in the U.S. alone and, while some obsolete receivers are being retrofitted with converters, many more are simply dumped in landfills where they represent a source of toxic metals such as lead as well as lesser amounts of materials such as barium, cadmium and chromium. According to one campaign group, a cord computer monitor a TV contains an average of 8 pounds of lead. According to another source, the lead in glass of a cord varies from 1.08 pounds to 11.28 pounds, depending on screen size and type, but the lead is in the form of stable and immobile lead oxide mixed into the glass. It is claimed that the lead can have long-term negative effects on the environment if dumped as landfill. However, the glass envelope can be recycled at suitably equipped facilities. Other portions of the receiver may be subject to disposal as hazardous material. Local restrictions on disposal of these materials vary widely. In some cases second-hand stores have refused to accept working color television receivers for resale due to the increasing cost of disposing of unsold TVs. Those thrift stores Stores which are still accepting donated TVs have reported significant increases in good condition working used television receivers, abandoned by viewers who often expect them not to work after digital transition. In Michigan in 2009, one recycler estimated that as many as one household in four would dispose of a recycler TV set in the following year. The digital television transition, migration to high definition television receivers and the replacement of CRTs with flat screens are all factors in the increasing number of discarded analog court-based television receivers.